Right, guys. <laughs> All right. Switching screens. Here we go. <clears throat> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, while Netflix stocks fall like a stone, our stocks are rising like a phoenix from the ashes. It's time for Intervision's Revival! I'm Umber Rays. I will be your host for today. It's great to be back and speaking of things that are great. We have a great lineup of hosts today. Uh, or guests. Sorry. Oh, God. Uh, just keep going. Just keep going. We're, we're paid by the minute. All right. All right. So first of all, I'd love to introduce first. Uh, thanks, Diggs, for interrupting with the no subscription. No Appreciate it. All right. First of all, we have Lazarus. Please introduce yourself. Uh, good night. I am Lazarus Ajin. I was I am a big viewer, big time viewer from like a lot of content creators for Warf Divisions. I have been around the community since like a bit before the tech, the tech collab. And I remember my main interest has always been in the live PvP scene. The, because it's like the, the, when I feel the game goes at its fullest potential. If using, you can use as several units that you don't see often on auto and that sort of similar stuff. That you can idolize a bunch more of MIs that Auto doesn't use correctly. So it's really like what that my interest in the game is. And recently, with a bit more time I had and knowledge of my setup, I started to stream class matches. I have been streaming for two for two class matches by now, and I hopefully I can get to the to the podcast for the for the divisions. Thanks for having me here. Hey, well, it's great to have you. Nice to always have brand new faces and not just digs every time for wow. uh, every wow. intervisions. <laughs> As speaking uh, of, next up we have, <laughs> of course, the world famous and absolutely yeah. wonderful yeah. Dr. Diggs. Say hello. Uh, hi, Diggs. Uh, I'll use my time. I'll just ask Lazarus a question and maybe we can all talk about it. Where do you all live? Because it's dark where you're at right now, Laz. Uh, it's early morning where Umbra's at. It's the afternoon here. Uh, I'm in Brazil, so it's like 10, AM, 10 p.m. right now. Oh, my God. Okay, so I'm in Washington. It's 6.07 p.m. right now. Uh, I'm in Maryland. We're at 9.07. And uh, yes. 10 a.m. here. So uh, me and uh, Lazarus are to <laughs> literally opposite <laughs> sides of the world. Of ours, yes. Awesome. And last, but certainly never least, a almost a regular on Intervisions for the <laughs> number of episodes excuse we've done. Me, excuse me, Minute is not the last one. I don't appreciate that you're ignoring the final lady at the bottom. She's a surprise. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> And so, Minute, say hello. Welcome. Welcome, of course. Minute. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Yeah. So, and yes, Diggs has brought it up, but we have our fifth guest today, Miss Esther, a brand new addition to the global family, and I'm sure a very welcome one. And we're, we're happy to have her here today, filling in that fifth spot as schedules were a little... Complicated as always, Intervisions is a pleasure once we get rolling, but it is a little bit of a boulder to get rolling sometimes. Because, you know, people got lives, people have lives, uh, and it is difficult to organize five lives. I challenge anyone in chat who doesn't know how difficult lives are to organize. Try and get like three people together. It's it's tough. But Anyway, we're here today pr to provide some entertaining content, and let's let's just first of all give ourselves a round of applause. We nailed the intro this time. Absolutely nailed it. So, with introductions out of the way, let's get into our first topic uh, right away here. Um, global Unit Esther. Uh, I'm pretty sure I misspelled discussion, but anyway... Uh, you guys 
I'm a JP player. I'm over here wondering about this brand new fifth guest that we have today. She doesn't speak much, but I figured you guys would be the gentleman that you are and talk about her. So Esther, she's come out. I know it's still early, but what are your early impressions on her? Let's go to Lazarus first. What do you think? I saw a bit of her kit. I didn't really play around much with her because I didn't have much of the time. And I thought of her was she has a bit of a breezy kit. I feel like her uh, it, it has a lot of mid range potential, like kind of like Elsie Rail kind of range. If you could think before her EX, EX level 25 skill around the house of four squares away, three squares away. Her, even with the accuracy buff, I feel like her accuracy isn't that great if you don't go a bit leaning a bit too much on her accuracy. So against like uh, Locke, Elena, she should be, be, struggle a bit if you don't go, if you don't really put a bit of focus, maybe give her a, a Alexandrite ring or something like that. Yeah. But I do like her kit in a way that it really has, it really has like a good, a good synergy with most resistance. You can make her other than magic, and but magic I feel like, unless you really care about the defense, defense, uh, deep, I think it's the def defense penetration from the special from her special skill. I don't think you really you sh you could just go like holy knight's pro protection and then you get a bit of a booker Esther against magic because it's still something prevalent. Like you can still have like a magic splash units from from the supports. You have Lila <laughs> always always like some somewhat uh, uh, often from around supports. So if you have a, a bit too much of low magic, you can resist and you can get super surprised with that. Of course, when you talk about Arena and you talk about Guild Battle, you can sort of expect with scouting of what the team is and then tailor around Aster. So you don't really have to care about that. But on Life PvP, since you have to really consider a, a long list of matchups, have to consider Quicken with magical units, have to consider have to consider a uh, more bruised team, which often uses supports so healers, so they can hit Astra, and it. So I think like that's a consideration you have to build her. Her effects and skills are nice. I think she has a good synergy with herself. Her sub job feels a, feels a bit lacking. I think I think you almost always want to go paladin with her, which is a bit disappointing. I like I like more when units have like a good a good synergy with all of their sub jobs or you, you don't really have a, mm -hmm. a like a set sub job you can you can do you know so i feel like that she's a bit disappointing in that sense but i f i still look forward to using her on a, a class match setting i think she's has brings a new new stuff to the table even though people just say oh she's gonna be cloud partner on lightning i think she has a bit more duty outside of lightning than the cloud because cloud you might really want to go with frederica because frederica ha carries the card that he wants to go with his hunter sub job he has the more the, syne the more synergy because of the, his own cards the few aster can help things beyond what cloud offers which is really really like the mo the main value you can, you can see yeah, uh, splash ability of a unit really matters to me and um life PvP they feel like that's that's a good study point for Esther. Also she's cute. It's like you <laughs> wow. really can't really, <laughs> can't really We must really get to the real reason. Uh <laughs> Diggs, how about you? That preamble for No, for I mean that. you said everything right. Um I'm excited for her in PvE. She has unit attack resistance down. I'm excited for Drain HP. She's a brawler. Um, she's something that Lightning needs. I'm hearing that she's being used in upper level PvP with Renan a little bit, but people haven't really decided if she's fully the Elena Buster that we want yet. Uh, it's still kind of being tested. It's pretty much how I'm hearing it. I just love her. I love her as a unit. I think she's going to be a great addition and solid, a solid backbone to Lightning. 
Hmm. How about you, Minute? What are your impressions? Are oh, Minute, Minute, Minute. You're you're muted. You're muted. No, Minute. Sorry. Um, <laughs> He's I, back. I don't care too much about um, PvP, but someone did share a build with me the other day that where she can get, I guess, to simultaneously a hundred defense pen and slash resist pen at the same time. Um, which, uh, that was probably the, the biggest thing that jumped out at me because if you can do that, you're basically just like, well, unless you have HP, I'm going to one shot you. Or um, unit attack resistance. Or unit, yeah, okay. But like, normally you're layering these things. Um, and then she's also just got ridiculous resistances herself. Uh, right, her buff, she gets like 20% to everything what is it she's got her base i think she's got like 20 percent of most things like 25 right. slash 25 pierce 15 strike 10 percent missile base just from her um just as part of her stats and then you toss in her buff that she can give herself and um yeah, it's just ridiculous um how tanky she is um the things i care most about though are um you can equip Exorcist. She has Steel Time. She has Slash Resist down and Unit Resistance down, which means I think she's going to be a great um, Lightning unit for Guild Raid. That's uh, disappointing for me because I really wanted Steel Heart on her instead of Sneak Attack because she, she would be really silly with that. Like, as I said, we would make the, uh, the less obvious shots against uh, Paladin versus Tifa, at least on life PvP setting. Because Immortal Spirit is very good there. Like extra extra actions to force to I mean to, to die is really strong. So I re raise we so strong and that's being kind of strong. We were before the podcast started, you were talking about Erica with Steelheart, or was it Resnick? Is it Resnick that has Steelheart that has Steelheart? Resnick. Do you think the reason hey, Resnick's AI uses Steelheart Charlie. is because oh God. he comes out and has a charm on his LB? Uh, I think the reason she goes for Steelheart is because she seems she do, she if you can like uh, go for stable her attacking moves she, she's gonna usually, usually prefer to do the most disruptive things. You can see like if Giza sometimes she would she would just turn out turn off all of her ranged attacks just so she could start consistently before her EX became like a, a one shot machine for some time. Since Resnick has support, you naturally don't want her to attack because attacking makes her not heal and support your team, which is her focus. So still hard to really synergize with that. You, I don't think you guys heard that, but um, I actually have some audio things for my channel points on this channel. So all of no, a sudden... I didn't hear anything. Oh, no. Yeah, uh, all of a sudden in the middle of your, of your guys' wonderful discussion, there was... Hey, Charlie, let's go to Candyman. <laughs> so that that's staying in. All right. Uh, yeah, it's a great discussion you guys have. From a JP player's perspective, definitely took a look at um, Esther. And I, I think she looks uh, really interesting. I don't know when we'll ever get her, but, you know, because we just got Elena. But that does bring me into the next thing I want to talk about. Uh, because all the time I hear, uh, thank you, Calloy. Thank you so much for gifting five gift subs, uh, Wait, to the community. Appreciate that. Uh, but really just ask about Esther's sword on Cloud, they just keep the Buster sword on him because I mean, it's relevant since we're talking about the Esther and Cloud is just kind of synthesized. So, I think Cloud still wants the, the Buster sword. Because I feel like Esther would would pretty much she performs better with her sword because it's more tailored to her stats and her sub stats. And Cloud is mainly just a DPS in a way. If you have both the team, that is. If you don't have, you can you can use like her sword on. I think it's also a pretty viable alternative, especially because because it's like. So time limited, and some people just got in time in time to get cloud, but not really from the sword because it was pretty pretty a pretty co a popular event. But the thing with get, getting Esther's sword is that you have to get Esther, so it's like 
do you really want to spend at like at max 40 40k this just for a sword and then like slow build the units it's really a, a count thing if you want to really i mean if it was a really good sword i would pay 40k this for a good sword yeah I mean, you also get you get a unit for you get a unit for it so it is a really yeah, good I, sword it was, and I made the classic JP player who doesn't play global mistake of being like, "Hey guys, I don't know about the, I don't know about the character so much, but that sword looks really good. You should get it." And everyone's like, "Umbra, you idiot! You can only get it if you get the character. How do you not know this as a JP player?" And I'm like, "Look, our Elena sword was a raid thing, which is." going to be real interesting for you guys when that rolls around for you in about three months whether that's true or not i mean not. if it makes you feel better umbra i get called an idiot every day so is, is <laughs> you shouldn't take that from small giant you shouldn't take that i that's, mean, I, I, I mean, mean it's, it's you know Esther domestic violence yeah. <laughs> so emotional mm -hmm. so i guess it, it, do you guys think in your professional global opinions is is she going? Is Esther going to shift the meta? Like I know you guys don't have Resnick yet, um, but what does what does meta mean? Well, it, you're it's you're something I've been grappling with. Is what do you mean when you say meta? Do you mean arena meta? Do you mean uh, top guild battle meta? Do you mean just like dominant in all courses of the game, kind of like Cloud? Because like by yeah. one of those definitions, Cloud would be like. Cloud and Ele Elena would be like the two universal meta units, right? True. Um, I, I guess I'd say overall, do you think that she will be um, like, well, let's put it this way. Uh, Astrius was on JP. Look, I even used the global pronunciation of that unit. Yeah, I'm doing yeah. good as a host today. Um, like, do you think it's actually that she will really be like, you'll just see her everywhere. Is she going to be the new... Elena, where I constantly hear that globalers are just sick of seeing this unit in all forms of content. And are we going to be streaming for Earth units to be murdering her? Diggs, let's go to you first. What is your thoughts? Uh, I think right now the initial impression is no. Uh, but, you know, things can always change. I think you know, probably the biggest tell on whether or not she'll be super relevant would be either the next global exclusive or, you know, whatever else is going to come out. I think when Astrius comes out and if Astrius still isn't meta, um, yeah, potentially. All right. And a uh, minute. We'll what? See. Oh. Sorry. Don't ever mean to cut you off. Just really good at it. Minute, your thoughts? Um, I'm gonna go with what Diggs just said. If uh, I think I think the most likely scenario is that if you were planning to pull Astrius and uh, you still do, and you didn't pull Esther, you're going to be very sad. You th you think she's gonna be that good against? I, I I think I think if you had been hoarding for the Celeste Astrius combo. You're probably oh, pretty oh. sad right now, and uh, it's not going to be super effective. Was that me or was that you? I just saw a minute freeze in time. I saw it too. Um, I think we're still live. <laughs> we'll just, we are. We'll just keep going. We're fine. Don't worry about it. And uh, all right. So yeah, I, I think I think that's the biggest thing. I think she's going to have it. I think she's going to prevent a meta from happening. Yeah, could yeah. it, it definitely? Uh, he has an element, big elemental advantage. Um, how about you, Laz? What's your thoughts? Also, hi, Dad. <laughs> I feel like uh, a meta. She's gonna be meta in lightning comps for sure. It can be either a, a new partner for Cloud, so you can focus really on the slash damage instead of going for the Rika. She has a bit more synergy with Cloud on on that aspect. Um. Like the third unit is always like a choice. You can go white pair aggro with with Renan, Frederica to the, the uh, switch around the damage type. You can go Charlotte to have a tank and also do a bit of slash ship and go, do chains. Or you can have Resnick, as Dix said, just as a general support while Raster face tanks with her bruises status. 
but I feel like for Lightning, she opens some. I opens a lot of door, especially for people that miss Cloud, because we always talk about oh, Lightning has Cloud, Frederica, Charlotte. She always we always mention Cloud on Lightning, but now you can think of a Cloudless Lightning because she is a slash Lightning unit that's available for people. Even though she's cost 100, we have seen already from me pattern that pretty much cost 100 seems to be the new pattern for re for units on on, uh, against like the early days where cost 100 was really special on tankred, I mean early tankred low, but still it was one of the few cost 100s. Gamesh and Stern, they were the only few for a long time and then we started to get more and more. So it really became became more common. Yeah, Ibarra too. Thanks, Martin. I, Ibarra also gives that agro, agro potential for them. And since she can also even frontline with Saint Bilbao, Paladin Sub. What I wanted to say is that Esther opens that door on Lightning. Now that Cloud isn't available, people can go for Esther for a replacement. It's really solid on any Lightning comp. While yes, she does she knows with Cloud, she can be her own showmaker without needing him to support the battle. I'm I have to refrain because I'm not not young enough about guild battle. I haven't been in guild boy guild battles for a long time. Class match, I feel like she's worse because you don't really really know what to play against. So like if you may, you can have either matchups where she's gonna be godlike or you can have matchups where she's gonna do nothing. Because of how the nature of our energy works, you can get like a, a win team with Lila more, and they just, if they just sit in the background doing chip damage and just dies in one round because she can take magic hits. You can go like against a full missile team, and then if they just becomes a top of god because she has so much, so many resistance, she gonna curve stomp. Mm. But in general, I think she offers a really good role for Booker teams, and she has the accuracy to semi-reliable check evade, so she's never gonna be a bad choice, in my opinion. Mm. And yeah, I think that's my my thoughts on Aster. Yeah, that's... PV, you can use whatever in PV, so... I'll add that she'll also be super relevant in two years when they finally rerun Final Fantasy Attack. Seven years, oh seven years for yeah. Final Fantasy VII when we finally get Sefi. I, I, <laughs> so to close out the global discussion of meta, I, I have a question for. So I know this is a, probably a little bit tough, but with JP recently, it's felt like I've seen some really common teams uh, that have popped up in a lot of stuff from top guild battles or as top as my my guys are <laughs> they were, we're top 200 you know ish in arena we finally hit legend rank this uh last couple months um so like there's there's always some teams that you get a little sick and tired of he seeing before esther has come around what was the teams what was a team that you saw way too often on global content together like this a team is, of this three is how you know you're a jp content creator umbra Yes. I think everybody knows what the composition is that we see yeah. all the time. Is there a time frame for that? Because if you like all time, I have a different comp. But right now, I think, yeah, Obno the, the Obnoxious comp is the Light Evade, as everyone has complained. Yep. Like, Alto has Engelbert, which is just an unstoppable wall with ungodly luck for some reason. So, so, so randomly, he dodges hit that he shouldn't really dodge. You have uh, the showrunners Elena and Locke. For my PvP, they're still strong, but you have like Mono Ice, always good, and Mono Wind always shows up too. Mono Fire has, has been around now with Terra, so it has a lot of good comps you can go. Also, the obnoxious stuff with like Neon Blade comps, Quicken comps, Double Quicken, it's like the usual strategies that you would see to synergize. They are mostly Rainbow or sometimes even Mono. But yeah, I think that the really the team that really shows up in every mode possible is activated right now. So, uh, Diggs, do you echo that? Or yeah, that mean light of aid. It light sucks. of aid. And <laughs> minute, <laughs> minute, you're smiling. Uh, I would also add that I hate. I just hate like every time I I, I fight a team. 
Um, even if I build to like beat Light Evade, I'll r- I run into the team and it's like, oh, Jaden's there, and uh, he. Yep. Like, That's my light like, team. I put Jaden in just to fuck yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the global meta, hopefully, you know, if Esther gets enough accuracy, maybe she will shift it. Maybe Light Evade will finally disappear. It started disappearing the last few months for us, but then it kind of came back recently because, well, Elena showed up and Elena was popular and then we got hit with the Dark Fina, which is also something that has yet to be seen. How much that is going to make a difference, but she's... Dark Fina is more of a... Uh, the final Celeste killer, but um, eh, that I doubt that's as much of an issue on global as it is for what was for us. Is we got our Celeste killer. Yeah, you have a bar already. So moving on, we have a fun little topic next. So you guys, there's been a whole bunch of banners recently. You guys are just about to hit your Persona Five collaboration theoretically, as well as uh, your final Warrior of the Crystal. I'm sorry to tell all of you globalers, but there really isn't going to be a Warrior of the Crystal of Earth or Darkness, probably. <laughs> Maybe yeah. not on the JP version. They're just not coming yeah, out yet. Dark, Dark Fina is the, is the replacement for the War of Dark. Well, uh, yes, well, uh, until Gumi proves me wrong, I'm claiming I'm right. But, so... Like, we've entered really recently in the last few months a lot of non-limited banners. And I think non-limited banners really show more how much a player is thinking and caring about things and what they think is fun. Because, obviously, you could always get this character at any point in the future. So, you know, we started the year with Astoria and Persona 5 and for JP, and then we went into... Uh, the new version of Leela, we got Resnick, we got Eliza, we got Sedali, we have um, Majin Fina. Uh, you guys are probably not getting Elena again, but you never know. Maybe they want to sell that character twice. So I'm curious for the panel today, what's the banner that's not Astrius? <laughs> Uh, that you guys are looking forward to the most? Like, which is the one you would go all the way to pity for? You got to choose at least one, by the way. What do you think? Let's go Lazarus. Who's it? Who is it? Eliza. I really want Eliza. I, she, her design always, like, uh, get, uh, captured me from when I saw her, saw her in story. Always interesting. And now with... Uh, I really want to see make like Rafale the Eliza team because they have some synergies together from the sniper sub job on Rafale and the fact that Rafale now get, got a second mass ability so she's gonna be strong by the time Eliza, a bit before a, a bit after Eliza, Eliza comes out. So I really look forward to that interaction. Not to mention that Ice has a lot of interesting stuff that you can add now. Eliza adds more projectile to ice, which we had Barrett for, we had Kiri, Kiri for, which, oh guys, Kiri is a meme, but now Kiri has like a billion range, so he can frostbite your, your team from across the map and he just left as you do, get your AP drain from, he never touching you. And now with Eliza, you have more damage for that comp. Like Barrett, he really he is a tank with projectile, which doesn't really make much sense. But Eliza brings <laughs> the damage. Rafale has some vi- variety on her slash and now missile with actual support. So I feel that Eliza enables one of the most interesting team comps you can see, both in, in auto and ma- in manual. And as an owner, of man- and she also is general pool. So because of that, a lot of people are gonna. Get, get her access to, or even skip. So more Eliza for me, where people are going, oh my God, she's so broken. Why didn't I pull for her? And on the mention, I, I dig spoiled it. It's, re- it's radic. It's most of the same reasons designed it too. Really interesting unit, kit-wise, and general pull. So I think that make do make do with like this kind of stuff that more player has access to all the time around. 
it's really an eye opener for how the game really develops because as much as the limited time units are shiny, they have unique gimmicks and it's that kind of stuff. I really enjoy in the game is seeing the original characters shine in price. And seeing units from the story that really do that really makes me want to use them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I got, I actually did get Eliza. So my Eliza is up to 115. Rafael, 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 Rafael. I'm, I'm sure I pronounced that wrong every time. She just got her new dagger from the uh, selection quest upgrade, which is like a really big boost for her. So, I mean, it's a really great little combination for ice. And it's, it's, it's really nice to see that, you know, we, we complain a lot about characters elements a lot of the time, but it's cool that both of the like uh, black witch Helena's uh, handmaidens ended up in the same element for, you know, synergy and flavor. Right? Retainers. retainers right yes like her 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 dagger is just super good for evasion ap consumption down um and uh defense penetration really everything you could want a weapon for an evadey character so good thanks and digs what about you who's your yeah uh i'm super excited for uh banana hammock engelbert uh you know he's gonna be coming we've been promised a male summer unit uh, i don't know you know there's nothing been leaked yet but we know it's coming uh but really i am excited for all of the summer units that are going to come out uh whether or not that's shadow links whether or not that is you know uh we know bikini uh, elena is coming out this summer uh i feel like i've always been happy with my summer units, I feel like summer units, with the exception of Summer Ketone, who's garbage, um, I feel like every, I feel like every summer unit has been good, and I've gotten use out of them in some way. So, I, just to clarify, because now I'm curious, are you saying that you are passing on Sadali? Are you passing on Dar or Leela? Like, are you? Yeah, I'll pass on them. I mean, I'll pull them all no matter what, probably, <laughs> uh, eventually. Because Sadali is, you know, he's in the pool forever. Uh, so is Leela. And I'm not sure that Dark is going to have the meta impact that we think it might or that it has on JP. So Good. we'll see. They might be slow build units for me. Zeg Corpio says, don't believe Diggs lies. So must be. Oh. Luncheon mentioned that uh, Valentine and Yura also I look forward to, like she's the one limited unit like, I really look forward to. I'm gonna probably skip Persona, but I'm gonna pull for Valentine and Yura. I really, because my thing is using WAC team, so of course I'm gonna use the... Well, she might uh, be in the permanent pool though. She might be permanent yeah. because if she, she is... is that, that, that's great. Yeah. If she is, amazing. That's even As better. Salir was. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Umbra. Umbra knows a lot about Valentine's units. Yeah, I do. He yeah. single-handedly got the art for Valentine Salir changed. Good job, Umbra. You know what? Yeah, that's all I, I'll take I'll take credit where credit is due. I will say this: no, you. I, I minute. I'm definitely going to get you. I haven't forgot you, but I have to say, Valentine's uh, Ildira has actually been one of the biggest pains in my asses <laughs> um, because. I run frequently the Astoria uh, Celeste combo, and she actually pushes the fire into potential like a 50-50 a win for uh, against that water comp. So I would not be sleeping on that unit at all, fire fans, because it's actually, I think, better than I probably gave credit at the time. Well, and it was misreported on Wode of Calc too. I think a lot of people don't realize that the wrong numbers were posted on Wode of Calc for her for a long time. So her CT reduction on her LB, I believe it was, is actually 500. And I think it was like 50 or something on Wode of Calc. So yeah. it's a huge difference. Yeah. Damn you, Bismarck. Damn you. No, 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 no. <laughs> chat, chat. We don't say anything bad about Bismarck. Otherwise, we're all going to get banned. All right. So but it's just one of those situations where I think because that was misreported, a lot of people uh, just kind of wrote her off. Yeah. Well, so don't forget. Always see, she has reflex. Every unit with reflex, they are going to be a pain in the ass. 
Oh, they're gonna die now. Nope, they will die because they, they got a fifty percent percent chance. Also, Diggs, I'm gonna I'm gonna just go and say Summer Keton has one one of the funniest teams on live PvP, which is Double Quick and Sleep LB, the team the enemy team. And then when she gets her done again, she just goes for the passage slash from a rune night night, and then everyone dies to a to a Keton on on in suit. It's really, really funny to until see Elena it. dodges it. <laughs> I mean, you can go with Terra. Terra Terra has. <laughs> If you wanna go like double double quick and Google Terra because she has hit it's the zip team's way funnier, so are you gonna go with that? You're the live PvP master. I know nothing about live PvP, so uh, let's let let let's have me, me talk because we have just hogging his time. Sorry. We need to have we need we need to have a live PvP uh, intervisions one time with uh, the live PvP masters, so Lazarus, Orin, I think. And a few others and just have there's, them all you know there's literally a live pvp prodigy. podcast with prodigy and daniel boone yeah, we gotta get them all <laughs> in here i just it's, want I, it's I, I literally need to... the longest running podcast for war of the visions but like they don't get the amount of views that they deserve like they work so hard Sh shout outs to yeah. our charles the dan and umbra you have you have the perfect chance to do to be the podcast because next episode is 69 that's the 69 so please join all right. It's meme episode. So, to go. It's... yep. Minute. I think we've distracted you from long enough from not getting your answer. Minute, please go on for 30 minutes about why your answer is the best one, please. Um, yeah. So, uh, Persona doesn't have a Trials of Reckoning, and all the other units are permanent pool. Um, so, uh, I'm looking forward to summer. <laughs> Summer units, really? So, Mama Helena is the only one that we have definitively confirmed that she is getting a summer unit. Uh, how? I guess. What would? You, what do you think? Let's let's have a little fun here. What's her element? Black. I mean, dark. <laughs> Black is not an element, Diggs. Good job. All right, there we go. Well, that's a. That's staying in. God damn it. Uh, yep. All um, right. So that's that's staying in. But yeah, I, I fully expect um, to, to follow on to my answer. I fully expect that the Fantasy X rerun is going to drop right around summertime. That's when the next Trials of Reckoning is. Um, it had Sodaly on it, so I will probably pull for Sodaly. But I also fully expect that the summer units will drop in global around the same time um, so that they can toss all the summer units on the Trials of Reckoning as bonus units and uh, force people to have them. Yeah, but but what element is Mama Helena going to be that you are going to have to pull for then? Um, she is going to be... Um, Earth. Earth? Really? Yes, Earth. We're gonna go with Earth. We're gonna go with Earth, Lazarus. What do you think? Only fire because she's hot. Fire because she's hot. Damn. <laughs> yeah. I. You know what? I I like uh, V1R choose in Chad who's saying ice to synergize with her handmaiden. So ice ice like unit. Ice is too powerful. Ice is too powerful, isn't it? Not yet. Could be. I, I think ice magic could use some love, although summer units are usually the opposite of whatever their main unit is. So she's not going to be magical, then she'd be physical. And then she really would synergize. So thought, yeah, I mean, I guess, well, it's it's up in the air. JP just got a dark unit, which means that the next element is going to be random. And matter of fact, speaking of JP, that leads us into our next topic. The JP 2.5 anniversary is coming up. And honestly, as a JP player, I have my own thoughts about what is coming. But I'm curious for you guys, for you globalers, what do you think is going to happen? And what do you want for an anniversary, for a 2.5 anniversary? I mean, any anything is on the table at this point for 
uh, Wotiv units. I very much doubt we're getting another Brave Exvius unit because we just got a Brave Exvius unit for the 6.5 anniversary collaboration. I mean, Global's going to get Dark Fina at about three months' time and everything. That's pretty certain. But what what collaboration? Do you think it's going to be the obvious thing with tactics and the um, what has been confirmed as tactics ogres happening at some point in the future? Or are we going to see something else instead? So, you know, the month of May... Diggs, I want your opinion first. What do you think? Uh, I mean, there's like three that I can think of uh, in terms of like what we're going to see, right? What, like, I think everybody says FFT. FFT is not coming back. I think it's too, like, I don't think they can do it. I think they're going to, I think they're going to do FMA or they're going to do uh, Echoes of Mana because Echoes of Mana is releasing next week. Uh, I think it's really weird that they haven't done a mana collaboration. They've done it in Brave Exvius multiple times. Um, it just seems like it would make sense for War of the Visions. So is, there, is there a Wotiv character that you would like to see? Like, from the story, a Wotiv character that you think is big oh, enough... Was that to... the question? Yeah. Sorry. Well, no, you answered the question, but I, I want to add a little bit to it as well. Um is there a Wotiv character? Because we're probably going to get some special Wotiv character uh, banner somewhere in the anime. I mean, yeah, I want it to be the guy that looks like me. Um, I can't remember his name. He's with the monk lady. He's with the monk lady. Square Jaw? Is it Square Jaw? Are, are you talking about the guy that looks like Shaggy from Scooby Doo? Uh, yeah, but that's he that's looks great. like me. Yeah. No. Shaggy. He looks like Shaggy. <laughs> I just call him Shaggy. <laughs> He, he is Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. It is Shaggy. Diggs is Shaggy from Scooby-Doo confirmed. All right, there you go. Minute's hot take on that one. Uh, um, all right, Minute, how about you? What do you think? Um, I think we've still got that rumor of a Final Fantasy IX remaster coming. Um, and so I think Final Fantasy IX will be the next um, game we get a collab for. Really? Final Fantasy IX? So if if that's the collaboration, who are the characters that are coming with it? Uh, Zidane, Garnet, Vivi. Three characters. And who's the free one? And why is it Garnet? Because I don't want to pull for her. <laughs> oh, it's definitely, um, definitely not Garnet. It's going to be Zidane. Think it's gonna be Zidane? All right, yeah, good. I mean, I just want to throw out. As much as I think it's not gonna happen, it would be cool to have Garnet be an evocation meta unit. Like we don't, we haven't had an evocation meta unit ever. It would be cool to have one. We literally just got one. Dig. She's not evocation meta. Uh, like she hasn't created the evocation meta. She is literally the MVP of Trials of Reckoning right now because of her evocation ability. What? But like I'm talking like PvP, no like PvP. Well, <laughs> PvP like, uh, like I want to see some Esper use in PvP. Like I want to see an evocation to like obliterate my opponents and crash their game. So my understanding is match. that um, is Terra, that has, Terra has is made evocation in live PvP matter. Wait, right? what? The thing with you go like someone with like really weak spell blade, like not this, like no magic, just to so you can AOE your whole team again, and again without losing much HP. She's gonna charge her evocation like crazy and then just one shot a whole team with a dodgeable Esper attack. See, that would you be know? great, except if I could do it on auto. Yeah, yeah, you, you can do it uh, yeah. on auto. <laughs> it's an you said class match. I th they gave you the answer on class match. They want I play, play class match. If I play class match, I play it on auto. Yeah, but you're not going to see evocation matter on auto. But I want to. I want to, see, like, what's going to stop us from having, like, okay, we have Terra. What if we got two more summoner characters, and then we had a summoner meta with all three summoners on the team? You would probably have to turn off every ability they had, except the one that charged the Esper Gate. And then they wouldn't be able to do anything because they would charge the I'd be fine with that. I'd be totally fine with that. I want a blue mage meta. Give me Quistis. Let's play with blue mage. Yeah, Final Fantasy VIII would be fantastic. 
Yeah, I, I, I think Final Fantasy VIII would be a, probably like a collab I would really like. I think it has fun characters for the for the throughout to vary to deviate a bit from the when ones you get. We could get Quistis for a Blue Mage, get Laguna for Missile, maybe a, a, a different kind of Missile. More. I don't feel range. like they would bring Laguna out if they brought Final Fantasy VIII. I know, but I, I, I say... <laughs> He's trying to have dreams, Diggs, you monster. I mean, Diggs, that, Diggs probably don't, dream, don't have dreams anymore that, now that he... Wow. Not, not wow. Right, so. <laughs> wow, no dreams because I'm married. Yeah. So that's how it works. I was supposed to try this. I know, be I know better. Oh, <laughs> and Skull is always like a fun character. Like he's like I think he's one of the as a good protagonist in, in some ways. But yeah, I still really hope for Final Fantasy Final Fantasy IX. If I had to pick any other Final Fantasy mainline game, it's one of my favorite game. Probably my favorite. Not, not that I think about it. Zidane, Zidane is a really fun character. We could have Steiner as another collaboration tank. Vivi, always a fan, fan favorite. I would love Vivi. And they, for the wildest dream possible, if they really kick the bu bucket, I would like to see either Octopath because they got you coming on mobile. They will really do like a s simultaneous release at one point to, to like promote the gacha. Global, or they do like a triangle strategy, just kick the bucket. Let's get Saranoa and crew in here. Would love to have them. The spirit of successor, you get the, the newest tactics game type of game, and then you get tactics ogre. Next would be like a fun, a fun thing. Or we're just gonna get the announcement for end of service. <laughs> that, that would, yeah, that's the, the dream. The persona curse, the, per, the persona curse. We got the persona collab. Now we have one year to survive. I've what? seen the like, uh, uh, so, uh, so uh, there are a few games that got a Persona Five collab. And they 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 some gotchas and they shut down after uh, a year. Like Star Ocean shut down, Dragalia Lost shut down. They all got a, a year of lifespan before they sh they shut down after the Persona collab. We got ours, so we are trying to see if we can survive the curse. Okay, I'm just gonna chime in and say I do not want any more non Final Fantasy collabs until they actually start releasing Final Fantasy ones for a Final Fantasy game at a regular pace. The fact that we got Final Fantasy X and all they gave us was a vision card. And an Esper. And an Esper. And an Esper. Is a travesty. Where is Riku? Where is Waka? Where is Kimari? Waka can't Lulu. be released. Like, where are all of those he's, units? He's not, a, he's not a politically correct character anymore. Can't release Waka. I, yeah. <laughs> I feel only that if you're gonna go with outside of the, the the Final Fantasy realm, you should at least keep the theme of like doing in the setting. Like I I like the near franchise, but I don't think it was a good collab because too too out there, too real, too futuristic. I don't think it fits the setting of World World If. If I want to see a collab for outside, it would be like a collab of something more me medieval, like Queer Profile. Uh, Say what, something that fits on the the same time time frame idea. Like I don't want to see like suddenly like Valkyrie Chronicles people running out of tanks and their guns. You know, like Laguna would be Final Fantasy, so he gets a pass for modern weapons. But if you're not Final Fantasy, I don't think you should you should you should remain on the on the, the fantasy stages. So Warcraft made me made me upset for that too. Then also also being a, a random Warcraft collab. Uh, Nier also made me upset this, this, despite the Nier because, because of that. It, it kind of like breaks the immersion a bit see that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, so I, I, I personally feel like I'm tired of... I mean, it, don't get me wrong. Persona 5 is like one of my favorite games ever, but it's still pretty... It's a little bit sad because we, we've learned that Wotav does not have the output capacity that like Brave Exvius does. Brave Exvius sends out, can do, like, has done all the Final Fantasies and now is kind of just repeating a ton of characters. But here we have, it's just really slow. And, you know, one year ago, 
was roughly the FF7 collaboration. Um, so, you know, a new Final Fantasy is distinctly possible, especially because, I mean, whatever comes next, it has to have a serious amount of content. And I think the entire community is basically wanting that like if it's going to be if it's going to be tactics it can't be tactics coming back with the exact same characters it needs to have something new i'm sorry you want content you don't just want to spend money for units no no i don't no i, I thought that's what this game was i mean kind of yes i mean that's the way this game is going and that's a really bad direction some people in chat have been talking about well, we need access to uh, weapons more and uh, uh, like equipment farms. And that is something that has happened on JP that I think has not happened on global. I just want to chime in, especially on that. Right now we have a lot of the old uh, missions, side events, all of those things. You can unlock one of those per day uh, for about 24 hours kind of thing. Uh, and, you know, you can that gives is, you access to old is farms. that what you're farming or are you farming the new two trust runes that came out that i'm sure everyone's really excited for well uh i, I we all right so mark it on the timer for this episode that's when someone finally mentioned the r word which we're not allowed to say oh was i not allowed to say that wow oh, did say that yes. yeah, 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 hard, 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 wow and him we didn't want the global community to know that they released two more trust stones. I mean, I haven't even <laughs> talked about it in any of my videos yet because why? Why bother? It's just oh, sh oh, sh oh. oh in chat just finding out about this. I'm sorry. I just like I, I can't believe you've you. done this, Diggs. It's such a mess. Mm. But you, you were so close to mm. doing an episode without upsetting Umbra. Diggs is so Diggs is going to Intervision's jail. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, you can put me. I mean, <laughs> okay. while, while we're on this topic, I'll, I'll talk about what I want. It's gonna see. be the background here. I'll, I'll talk about what I want to see for the two and a half year anniversary, and that is, I want um them to make it so I spend less time in menus, please. Um, Diggs mentioned this earlier. Um, the fact that it like I've got multiple vision card slots, right? Like half of my team comps, I haven't even bothered to go in and put the second these. Because I'm like, it is too much of a pain. I can't easily figure out which elements they're synergizing with. Like, where's the little thing where I just click the element symbol and suddenly I see all the VCs and Espers of that element, right? Fix all of that. Um, Can we because just hire Bismarck to do some the UI stuff? The thing that caused me to quit Final Fantasy Brave Exeus was when I realized that 90% of the my time in game was equipping my units for a 30 second battle what about leveling up the cactars because that drove me oh crazy yeah too. That, yeah that, and that was that was that was five percent right yeah it was yep. merging the freaking cactuar the inventory yep. management i don't want to spend all of my time in this game on inventory management i want to get in the level and actually play the game yeah I feel like a big thing that really is underrated when people say about quitting a game or something, or something like that is like player retention. Many people say about player retention when it comes to new players, like, oh, how progression feels for a new player, how much resources they get to develop the, the team and their account and that kind of stuff, which is all fine and good. And the world has done really big steps on that direction, especially with the new collabs and how more receiving they have been to new players to make sure they at least have like a the chance and the possibility of having a good team like rerolling is way easier than it was before if you are not satisfied with the units but i feel a big part of player retention is also having a a good cycle of gameplay like having a lot of farm is of course, it's gonna be. All, it's hard to not have a game based around farming, especially on the mobile aspect of uh, the model. You want to have a way to get the player to go back. That's why login bonus exists. That's why you will get streaks. And I feel like a way to get players to do that without they feeling exploited is by giving the player a, a easier way to go by the the gameplay cycle. Keep tickets are a big boom for that. You don't have to sit there where the when the match goes and goes and goes. But I feel like the why on Wotev is really non-friendly. Like, 
people in live PvP, they talk all the time about the skills, how you, you really have to go to Bot of Calc to know what, how much a skill really does, uh, any hidden effort, the values of debuffing, that kind of stuff. And like, it's stuff you can't have the game. Chinese version of Votev has the mods, the status, they have everything on the game itself. Why can't we have it? Why can't, can't we go, go in global? And if you don't like it, why you can't just put an option to toggle off the details? Go, just go like a simplified and a detailed way to show information. People that don't care too much, they can go, go simplified, the game stays as it is. And people that care, they go detailed and get all the minute details. They can get how to how much percentage is going to get to hit and that kind of stuff. I feel like the thing that really makes a lot of people not happy with the game is this kind of stuff. How all that really makes that sure just to navigate to, through the game, to do your menu tasks of making a team or going in a quest and really upset me that a good a game that has constantly evolved on many aspects keep tumbling on one of the most basic aspects which is player interface and uh, engagement it really upset me yeah i mean I, I think we all have some complaints uh, if you've watched my stream you know how how many crashes and app closes and even on the phone i've had uh uh like freezes actually recently i've been experiencing yep. freezes where i come back and it's on power saving mode and the time is frozen i'm like it's not 11 56 it's very clearly past midnight and the game is completely frozen which is uh, becoming very regular the app instability is and i don't know if you guys are experiencing the same thing as about like blue stacks it's like okay it's an emulator it's not a hundred percent uh it's not designed for that right but it shouldn't the... be rocket science to play the game hmm? what it I shouldn't almost... be rocket science to play the game yeah i feel like i would complain about the stability of the game but um this is nowhere near the lowest that global no, no um, it's been we way had worse. that what was it, like five month period where the game was basically un almost unplayable on an emulator and um like even on the phone, right? And and what, what I think we had the Android update where like now it was unplayable on everyone's phone for a month, <laughs> right? Like I don't even remember how how long that was. At this I think it was point. Android eleven, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was like Android yeah. eleven, and they like I remember my phone updated and I could no longer play on my phone, and I had to only use BlueStack. Yeah. So it, it it's hard for me to complain about that. I, I would honestly um, be ecstatic if they just made auto formation not suck. <laughs> <laughs> the quality of life increase that would be like, actually give me VCs that make sense for these units so I can just go. Right. Would be amazing. And it, that shouldn't be that hard to do. Um, and uh, like it would like it would it would just save me so much, right? like, especially when I'm like right now I have to have ten or eight pre-built teams for all of my elemental challenge runs because I can't just be like give me a great water. Team. Yeah, uh, you can't like go oh let me filter by rarity and for example selection quests. Even though the game has the the limitations, you could you can go like oh I want to uh, uh, MR team which this this amount of cost and that kind of stuff. You have always these loops that the game insists to throw at you. That really affects, like, people, like you say, playing the game should be rocket science. Some people enjoy the rocket science of the game. But people shouldn't have to be forced to use either a rocket science version or a really dumbed down version, no? They, people should have the choice. I feel that that's the thing. A gamer should a game should be able to cater to both the try the tryhards and the the casuals. Yep. World, World of fails that on a fundamental level. Really do. And like it's a thing that I'm sure that it could be it could be probably arranged to fix. They just had a bit more, more finesse with how they did the manage the game. With the amount of money that we pour into the game too, you would think there would be someone out there that would fix and adjust the game 
right? Like with the amount of money that Wotiv is making. So, so I'm 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 going to interject there. Um, I, I there's first of all a question in chat. I want to uh, just answer really quickly. Someone was asking whether China, the Chinese version, has a different team. Uh, first of all, yes, the Chinese version has an entirely different team. They're completely separate from completely different company. Yes. Uh, so basically yeah. all of the assets of Wotiv are sold to a Chinese company and yeah. then they do everything themselves. So it's, a, it's, it's not even remotely connected, uh, to our version. So, I mean, like, and it's not coming back the other way either. So I, no, I don't, and they change things like they change limit break effects and stuff. Yep. It's like they they pretty much they just take the engine. They have the access the access to the assets and stuff like that. But they can't add stuff without consulting Gumi and things. It's that game. They just have the 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 skeleton of the game. Mm -hmm. They they just do what they want. The VCs are there are really bonkers. They give like move up to the units. It's really wild. Like the VCs there, that is completely different. Yeah. And i feel like the no i mean population doesn't have to be big to um for uh just addressing long term a game can have a low population but have a lot of big spenders and that keeps a game afloat and it's really often for a game to not be not have like enough of a player base so you always see the same faces around but they have they have enough engagement for a few big whales to just keep spending money and money and money the game afloat for a definite amount of time because at the end of the day they don't care how many players play the game they just care how much the, the players spend yeah and honestly i feel like votif just really isn't really not, never gonna have a big pop population because they the game is too niche let's be honest i mean Since rpgs they have to be very streamlined in a way either visually or gameplay-wise, so they can really appeal for most people. And strategies, grid-based RPGs aren't that. So Persona 5 are gonna bring people not because they're gonna stick for the game, they're gonna stick for the characters. They're gonna stick because they can play with Joker, uh, Makoto, and Violet in the team. They're not gonna stick because they like the grid, the calcs, and the height, and the, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, we're gonna have, never gonna have a big population, but I feel like just be, because of that, exactly, we shouldn't take for granted that oh, if you want if you want to have this kind of content on mobile, you have to go for it. So we're gonna treat you like shit, which is a wrong way to manage the game. I feel like I feel like you shouldn't take things for granted like that because if a game is unique on the on the on what they do, but it's still bad, no one's gonna play a bad game. They, want, they play a game to have fun. They not they don't play a game because it's a unique niche. If Voltev keeps trying to just do stuff for the sake of selling, for the sake of keeping the circus interesting without really increasing the quality of the seats, way, I feel like the game isn't gonna last because it's like if if like not, a lot of games are considered like. Oh, this game really just lives because of the collabs the game gets. And I, I with the Persona 5 collab, I'm fearing that maybe if whenever well, uh, Gumi sees that, oh, the sales are down, they just slap a popular IP, the game just becomes like a random game with where we have Joker and then Naruto and stuff like that in the team, then <laughs> I think it's going to boost the appeal for me. It's really going to go... Go... So, so, I mean, people are people are talking about quality of life for uh, the 2.5 anniversary. And I need to remind you guys of what is the major project coming down the pipeline. It's that nasty word that I actually forgot in one of my videos. Um, so one of the biggest things that we've been that the JP live streams and everything has been talking about for Oh, about a half a year now is this isn't that community shit is it yes it is exactly no, that why why it has been a major footnote in every single live stream lately and yet they have not shown us any any they haven't even shown us a screenshot of how it exactly works um i think that a ton of money is being poured into this thing like, that is why a... do that when discord exists 
Well, it's 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 not even necessarily Discord because it's supposed to be it's from what I've heard. And again, this is just poor communication and the fact that there hasn't really been any screenshots for us to compare to. It's supposed to be Reddit. It's supposed to be a votive Reddit. It's a side app or a a tumor based addition uh, to our game that That's is what effectively. It is. It's a tumor. Hmm? It, it's 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 trying to be a discord or whatever but only for votive which is not the biggest community let's be honest but it's still a pretty good community but we already have discord we have reddit and i and the reddit for votive is not exactly huge so and jp well, japan has a ton of their own things too right we have line we have yeah, they, they have line they have they have Blogs, blogs are way more popular in Japan than they are in... Because we just talk about 4chan, but Japan has a lot of other blogs that people use. I can't really say the name because I, I'm not familiar, but Umber probably knows more so what I'm trying to say. I and think, I, yeah. The websites, blog websites. Like people There's do, a like, different just, YouTube even too, right? Like a video sharing site that's way more popular. Nico? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, J JP has its own yeah. apps and everything that effectively work. Mm -hmm. yeah, like it's a, it's a different community in a way. Like global global communities, uh, they really tend to flock around Reddit and Discord because it's a an app that, that there are apps that pretty much supports in a way only that kind of content. Okay? I mean, the communication is really laser focused, and people in JP think like like the game having a sort of social in working JP but it gonna definitely feel like a tech almost just to show stats oh look player retention people are spending more time in the game so the pay, the game has has been successful when it might be just because they enjoy being in a, in a in a social social network without having to access the game hit their farming farming on in, in global Maybe maybe it's gonna be something. I mean, there's people in, in World Chat. Like, you, how often do you go in World Chat? People go to World Chat every day for some reason. I don't know why. But people do. So maybe they're gonna be a sort of branch small community here. And let me tell you, World Chat is a toxic cesspool as well. And so is Reddit, so is Discord, so is Twitter, so is <laughs> everyone else that World of can, can have a community. But yeah. I feel like if it comes to global, it's not going to be pretty. It's going to be another sink of resources that we're going to get updates on things that people are, that are going to get, unless we're going to get like, oh, do a post every week for some visitor, and then people are going to force to go do shit posts or something. Because people are always going to do stuff for free. I don't want that to be a way that Wotif keeps the player around this because they want to you to use Reddit on Wotif. I just want Wotif to be the reason people keep playing Wotif. Yeah, and, and let's yeah. be honest, if they control the content uh, that gets posted to this stuff, uh, you're not going to get any of the good memes anyways. Nope. You're, you're not even going to get... You're also not going to get objective criticism either. Yeah, no, they... Um, I mean, we've seen it... Big's banned from Wotif app confirmed. Oh, I, I'll be banned before it even launches somehow. That's that's really what's taking so long. They're actually trying to figure out how to pre-ban me. They're just like, ah, oh, shit, that Umber Ray, is, he complains about everything. Motherfuck. Yeah, just get him out of here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's... I think it's concerning, to say the least, um, that the app has been floundering so much in terms of... And and I I talk about this because this is basically my side game I, in like Hearthstone this year is a, a lot of people always pick on it because it's like oh it's it's part of Blizzard and Blizzard's a massive company and they have issues getting the game to work properly but this year they they basically said look we've launched a, a ton of new side things in it and we're just going to step back from releasing new major things for the game and we're just going to focus on getting the game working properly and that is was so refreshing in a way because it's just like at some point the most important quality of life update is just to have the game running properly 
and not be frustrating because the more frustrating something is, the less likely people are to come back to it. And well, and it's so embarrassing when you watch their big streamers and they're constantly restarting their Hearthstone game because it keeps crashing on them. I mean, like, that's embarrassing for a company. Like, it is. Shit. I mean, I, I think also that you have to be a little bit fair when it's like a bug. Like if you have a major content patch, it takes time to figure out necessarily where the bug is coming from and how to fix it. Like that's the back end side, which we don't see. But I mean, like what would have effectively now on JP ever since the it like has been getting worse and worse. And we just keep getting promises of like, we're going to push out this social app that nobody asked for and nobody wanted. And how much money of our resources are getting being put into this instead of like new collaborations. Like if what if I think honestly needs new leadership to scale back, like whoever is in charge of what if I think is making key mistakes of being like, like, one of the things that we hear about on JP is that voices are one of the things that's holding tactics from coming back. So just don't do voices. Skip right? away. It's... <laughs> we want Team Yuki Sawashiro to get out of the her all million jobs to voice Agrius. That's her dubbing uh, cutscenes for the PSP game. Yeah. There's a thing with Fire Emblem Heroes that people have always been memed about because there's the character called Tiki that she has a, a she appears in multiple games. All the games she appears as a child, and the other one she appears as, as an adult. Her JP adult has a way way too popular of uh, actors. So what happened is that all of the alt versions goes to the child because her VA is a nobody. And since the adult has a really expensive VA, they only have like one version of her because they're not going to pay a billion for a few lines. They get that? So I think that, that might on another could be happening with Wolf. If they die, might be trying to skimp on paying a, a while no VA that Agres has just because and they just keeping delaying taxes because maybe well, I think they want to get rid of English VAs because that was a question in their survey was, do you listen to the game in English or Japanese? Question. And a lot of the English voice actors are pretty famous. Like they're famous Genshin Impact voice actors now. Like, OK, question for know, you. Guys. They must be getting paid money, right? Yeah, I mean, they are. Question. Would you guys honestly and I, I I don't think that this would happen per se, but hypothetically, it's a hypothetical question. Would you guys? Yes, I would voice Mont. Yes, I would voice Mont. Thank you. Would you that. guys support? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Would you guys support a slightly or just a cheaper game if we completely did away with VA? Yeah. Not not even Why not? not even a question. I don't care at all. Who well, listens I, to the voices? No, yeah, I do like the stuff. I think like some sort of voice, like a grunt or something like that, just to add a bit of a, a like it's fine for me. A lot of RPGs that are popular just have like grunts as a character sound and they work just fine. There is still some sort of personality quirk. World Tip, you're not gonna have like a lot of, a lot of sounds in, or like you're gonna, not gonna have like subtitle of what they're gonna meant to be saying or like an LB or something like that. Because they do say stuff in, in X speed, if you don't know LBs. Like if you're speed up, they don't say anything, but they do say stuff. They, we already have the, the, the skill codes for spells, so maybe we could add the skill codes to other attacks just so, so we could have a bit of personality, maybe had a bit of variation per character, like a, we have more sassy codes for a certain character using a skill or, or for a certain job. We have more serious from more historic characters, but you, you do away with the VA so you can have those resources go to somewhere else. Maybe do like like uh, more side stories content, or maybe give like collabs and seasonal stories like summer and Christmas a, 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 a small plot just for the, for the sake of giving a bit more of personality and life to the world, you know? Because like Christmas is mentioned as a holiday in the in the in the continent of Astra. You see like the lore for for Chris, for Christmas Victoria Tiamat, they mention it's a, it's a thing. Why don't you have an event where it's like a, they spending a Christmas like 
just chilling somewhere after some kind of battle, like see Mount and stuff like Spain Christmas, Christmas on the beach. Yes, Sadali S- Sadali is a <laughs> hardcore Christian confirmed. Yep, yep. Yeah. Confirmed. Like, confirmed. It's a you know like that kind of things like they add that add to the world are just in the law of the cards and people are not gonna stop to read the law of the cards most of the time. All the role of the TMR, and it really is a shame because it can do a lot of fun stuff with that, you know. World of has a lot of wasted potential on that because I feel they get hung up on two on things that are too on things that are too important for them and not important to the players. I mean, someone's asking in chat, do you think 14 VAs had a clause in their contract that allowed them to do collabs quickly? I don't know. I, I mean, the back end of whatever is going on in Wotiv with VAs, I think, is entirely messy at this point because it's 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 to some extent, I don't believe that it's that difficult to or that much time to make EXs for Orlando or whatever. It's one new job plus a couple of upgrades. It's not it's or one new attack and it, it's it's not that much work. So I assume that the VAs are a huge issue I mean, because of Corona and everything, but honestly, if it really is, let's just get rid of it. Let's lower the cost of this game. That would help a considerable amount. Uh, stop what whatever is going on with the quality of lives. Like, take a step back and reorganize and refigure it out and just make the game a much easier thing to play. Like what Minute was saying with with the accessibility but also the potentially the complexity that lazarus wants and i think I or think digs Hirono wallet to make it cheaper i think they need to get rid of Hirono because he he's fucked up war the visions he's fucked up brave exvius uh he got put in charge of pixel remaster he's completely messed up all the pixel remasters every single launch of the pixel remaster has been a disaster deal is still broken in the final fantasy 6 pixel remaster because of how it's coded like that is a upper level management mistake that's because of Hirono. uh i think he's the one that has to take the responsibility see i feel, I, feel, I have a theory for the final fantasy 14 based on other games what they usually do is that i think they just since they had to voice for for endwalker anyways they had to go to the studio to voice stuff for endwalker because it, it, and Tanker Dada, they just took them out for a quick recording session for Wotif and then they just got them back in. Did a few lines and then they got back. If they are going to record lines anyway for more of the games, they might as well just call them for a, a, few, a few things for Wotif and then that's it. It's not that hard to do if they are already going to have, have to go anywhere anyway to the studio. I think that's what happened. I, I can't remember where it was. Wasn't there something Whereas, like one of the community streams or or one of the community events, where they were like, it came up that most of the players play without the animations on, and they're like, "But well, we worked so hard on the Esper animation." Yeah, that I'm came like, up in no the. No one gives a shit. Fiesta. Yeah, that came up yeah. at the festa, and they were really Hirono was really upset that they spent a lot of money on the CGI Esper animations, and nobody watches them. Like he but had no idea. He had no idea that they crashed the game. Yeah, that's a major problem. I mean, right? Like that—that that was the thing that that slayed me the most, right? Like everyone turns the thing you're spending a ton of money on off because it makes the game unstable. Yes. Yep. So if you're gonna spend a ton of money on it, do it right. But it it also or it... just stop. It, it makes it faster to farm, which is the other thing. That's the other thing, right? Like, reduce the level of farming in this game. Off, My but I'm God. Not farming. Oh. I get from the I get in a way from the developer standpoint that they want to have their work appreciated because uh, yeah, people pretty much they thought they did the animation with care and love. They're pretty sure that people that worked on many of the animations they did in the like the job. The thing is, players players are not really gonna they don't don't really have a way to show the feedback for the animation. They not there's not like a uh, you finish the cutscene. And there's like oh do you have a, do you want to answer a quick survey to know how much, how well this thing was animated for you? Not a way to have that feedback. I think you shouldn't really expect you should have try for high quality. 
But if you get data that players aren't really aren't really gonna use their animations, be honest with people. Go like in our news and say. I mean, uh, like Square Enix events. has never been honest when they get yeah. feedback from any player base. I mean, yeah, the example of like Final yes. Fantasy XIV's beta, absolutely, they literally went anti-player and were so hostile to the beta testers saying they were wrong, that they were like, you know, glorifying, you know, and they just refused to admit they're wrong or just what they're doing, so... Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think you're living in an idealistic world where maybe they'll listen to us, but I don't think that's the case. I, I think I mean, Lazarus gave them a new new idea. We're gonna watch our next CGI cutscene, and afterwards they're gonna be like, for the next twenty minutes, you can tip five dollars to the CGI artist. <laughs> <laughs> they want to donate to this artist uh, Patreon. Here's the tears of, of Patreon you can't subscribe to. <laughs> I literally would be just so happy if, like, the Wode of Calc image of Odin popped up when I evoked Odin and just, like, smacked the screen. Like, I would be, I think people would be just as happy with that as they would, like, a CGI enemy. Yeah, like, like another story-style artwork? That would be perfect. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I, just, like, I and just throw it into the screen, right? I would love if they did, like, something, instead, if they did something similar to Tactics. They just did, like, a, a 2D uh, style of the summer, mm -hmm. like, an inferior kind. And then the map shifts because of the power of the Asper. That's kind of horrified Asper. So they, they, they are like a big, big ass cut from Odin. And then like the, the ground's perfect still. Like I don't want the ground to be break, but I think the map should detract more of the animations because it, do, it really doesn't. Just have like disconnect animations for Asper that do something with a big boulder, but the map doesn't really react to that at all. I, I feel do like that's really a shame. I, I do want to take a moment to give Gumi credit for something that they did do right, because chat was chatting about it a little while ago. The whole, uh, you don't have to do your own attacks in guild battle thing anymore is hands down the single thing I'm most excited about coming to war to global. That was yes, only I mean... my guild leader could see my roster and build the teams for me too. Yeah, that it would be great. Um, I wanted to just chime in on that one and say that it is, it, it's not completely unlimited. It's, uh, I think they, there's only like, it can do it three times per battle or three times per month or something like that. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Cause I'm not a guild there was, leader. There was this quality of life two years ago. When that comes out, I'm never attacking again. Ah, oh, um, so find a way, find a way I, I want, there's one thing I want to say about the app in general and why I think Diggs is right to be pessimistic. Um, if you look at gotcha games nature in general, why, why when you play every single day, when you log in every single day, are you constantly meted with a pop-up of what is currently going on in the game? To what extent, yeah. purpose, and meaning does that have other than insecurity about the people who are actually playing your game every day. There is nothing more useless to me and more frustrating 800 days in of being <laughs> greeted with a thing saying, did you know Majin Vina's a fucking banner? And I'm like, no, have, right? please tell me at oh. great length and ask me in a survey if this was useful, because I have a lot of good feedback for you. I, I honestly do. I feel like, like they, well, what if they really push the formal to like much they can without feeling expressive? But of course they do. It's formal. They are trying to really Question make people want to spend for them. Umbra. They just talked about Est the Esther sword. Like you have to pull. Uh, you need to get a sword that's like a, a direct upgrade to another sword. Like, why? Why can't you just make the sword like every other bingo board? Just like from you engaging with the event and stuff like that. No, you have to get the unit. Get Esther and you get the, this shiny new toy. Isn't, do like, you guys do you guys have the flash sales on JP that we have now? Uh, no, they don't exist. We we do like the J, JP version is considerably worse in terms of monetization, um, but it doesn't have the advertising say or the advertising videos or whatnot that you guys have. So it's always been a this balance of we don't get that, 
but we also miss out on some other stuff. So, yeah, it's uh, six. It, it's hard to say whether it's a net positive. By the way, this is this is Kirino's business card. It does not have any actual useful contact information. So definitely oh. his business card. So that's tricky. unfortunate. Yeah. But anyway, you guys, I've really enjoyed having you all on. Unfortunately, I think we're going to have to cut it for today. I wow. mean, you're taking us off your stream. Damn right I am. Wow. Wow. He, he saw it's late for me. It's my bad time. He's yawning. We have to get we have to get him to bed. We can't mm. kill him on the first live stream digs. We're gonna have to. We're, you know what? We're just gonna have to have another intervisions sometime in the near uh, future. Twenty four hour intervisions win. Uh, and the first one to fall asleep. You gotta be me. I really, I'm really easy to fall asleep. <laughs> like the, the time, time I playing the switch, I just fall asleep. Even I gave him, and then I just like pass out, and then I wake up the switch, I drained, and I'm like what the, what the hell just happened? <laughs> I as I, I am I, since I am the newcomer in this this one, I just want to say I really enjoyed, and I hope I can join more events. It's what it was really nice to hear the perspective of Umbra, the and Minus, hmm. because my my view of the game you is one. mostly you missed one. Oh, Esther, yeah, Esther, thank you for uh, your great contributions to, the, to today's interventions. You really were the star of the show for half of it. Yeah, I mean, for, she's been on here the whole time. Saying, it's... Despite not saying anything, you, 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 you did a lot in it. But yeah, I really enjoy seeing the perspective of other content creators and their way they see the game in general because I am really laser focused on what I do. So my my view is very skewed, and always knowing more of the, yes. the game I really like is always beneficial for how I see and enjoy it. Maybe I do spend more time now on arena stuff like that to see things like discussion about Resnick and other stuff because I really find that interesting. Just I don't have the time for that. But yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate everyone that watched and asked in in chat. I my I I know that it has a, a jail in here and I I swear it's not where I sleep because the exam giant wants me to sleep there, but uh, confirm. I, I hope confirm. I can see. I hope I can see, can participate another in another intervisions soon enough. Oh, well, Umber just, just has to do more. Sorry. That's true. Um, I'm I am going to try and be better. I am going to try. Sorry, I, I, I think. The goal going Cutting forward it. is to make slightly smaller intervisions because I, I think our initial one was like two hours or something like that. And it was just like it was a little heavy. Uh, I am going to try and be better, obviously, with working full time right now. It's it's cut in pretty hard uh, to organizing these because a lot of the times it's like I put out a thing of being like, Hey guys, who wants to do this? And everyone's like, ah, not on that day. And it's just like, well, shit. Um, I mean, it, it's it's tough to organize. But you know, Laz, you did real great today. Uh, we, for your first time on Intervisions, you had a lot of uh, fantastic stuff to give us in terms of like opinions and everything. And we we always love. I love being on stream, having people watching, and I don't have to do anything. <laughs> so you're you're you fit perfectly in here with us, even if you are in jail. Be a great addition to my collection. <laughs> and I just wanted to add that I really enjoyed uh, hanging out with Lazarus, Umbra, and Esther as well. And I noticed that there was someone missing in that. Wow! Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow! A minute! Wow! Breaking my heart. It's okay. We're fighting now. We we can have beef. We can have beef for a while. So, all right. Uh, closing statements. Uh, I'll give you 30 seconds each. Uh, anything that you want to say, you can plug yourself, your channel. I mean, don't don't plug yourself in, in that way. We'll get uh, we'll end up getting uh, canceled. Um, but uh, anything I, that I don't you... know if canceled would be the right word. Well, eh, 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 you might find eh. yourself getting more subscriptions. Uh, but 
This is not only fans. Um, you, you guys. Do... All right, Diggs, you first. Thirty seconds. Take as many shots as minute as you would like. Yeah, um, not gonna do that because I love, I love everybody here. I love minute. You know, minute and me go way back. Lazarus has been a long time viewer. Um, you know, Esther is fantastic. Not saying I predicted that Esther was coming, you know, and people told me I was wrong for weeks. Um, you know, shout out to my great, amazing husband, Giant. Um, come see my channel because my views, I don't get a lot of views. Make sure you leave some haterade on my uh, comments, especially my lightning video. Make sure you drop like a real fuck you digs on that one. Uh, that seems to be the popular thing to do right now. And uh, that's where we're at. <laughs> Excellent. Well, you heard that. Go hate on Diggs as much as possible. If I don't see at least 13 new fuck you comments in the earliest com earliest 50 comments on that video, our community sucks. Uh, all right. Uh, next uh, minute, you have 30 seconds. Go. Anything you want to plug this week or whatever. Uh, yeah. So I just want to say um, I love Trials of Reckoning. Um, my Discord, we got a channel um, for Trials of Reckoning with a bunch of the high scorers um, currently hanging out in there, uh, just chatting and uh, throwing shade at each other a little bit. So uh, it's a lot of fun. So if you've been working on Trials of Reckoning, come join us. Um, and then the other thing I'll say, uh, Diggs, is I love your new um, pull wars for your viewers. You need yeah. to do more of those. That was awesome the other day. Whoa, cat, cat, oh, cat, cat, <laughs> cat, cat, cat. <laughs> There's our sixth host for this one. Yeah, here's here's Miso, everybody. He came over. He was walking over my audio setup. Yay, Miso. Mm -hmm. All right. And All right. Uh, last but certainly not least, Lazarus, 30 seconds. Plug yourself as hard as you can. Go. I, I am a new, new content creator. I do basically lives on class match i do some theory crafting and play on the third slot and sometimes i leech off randos stream so with a raid and i also want to shout out my guild bravate that has been for, for me for forever i always played and even when i quit for a long time they always kept me updated in the game they really kept my, my engagement so live pvp discord go join that we always need more people to beat i mean teach and <laughs> wow i really i really hope that i really hope that you guys can tolerate me for other divisions i know i speak a lot but i speak from a place of love and mostly mostly a lot of opinions oh no no you're 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 totally fine it's a it's a balancing act and you did perfectly fine today. We are absolutely happy to have you, and you did fantastic because we like opinions here, be they spicy or dull. We, you know what? It doesn't matter. Just, I mean, this is content. This is content, and that's as as much as we need. Um, but yeah, you did fantastic. Don't worry about it at all. Um, so as... The host, I'm going to close it out by saying that all of you in chat and watching on YouTube, you go follow these fine gentlemen and support them as much as you can. Lazarus uh, on Twitch and YouTube. Do you have a YouTube? I have a YouTube, but don't post anything there. So just follow me on Twitch. That's right. the best there way. There we go. And, and all right. So definitely on Twitch, follow him. Diggs, he makes... Uh, videos that you can get angry at that's amazing and um, you should all go get angry at him because he loves it and go support him and his husband small giant who is a fantastic member of the community uh, so definitely go support him and of course minute you're just minute on twitch aren't you or what, what is your actual handle i keep forgetting minute this havoc? yeah minute havoc Minute Havoc. There you go. I have it on here as Minute Hour, but it's Minute Havoc. Minute. Oh, yeah, because Minute Hour is his Discord. Right, right. So you can you can harass him now on Discord and. Oh, wait, no. Amazing. I, I am lucky enough to not get all the. So I not don't yet. know if that's because I'm better than Diggs or uh, just fewer people know about. 
mostly mostly totally excellent well thank you guys for joining me one last time i have to just thank you so much and we're going to try and do these intervisions again this certainly won't be the end that you see of me or guests a plenty we'll try and get of course some more people because 2.5 anniversary is coming up right around the corner and whether it's going to be disappointing funny stupid or all of the above we're going to be here for it so yes and of course thank you to everyone watching us live on twitch and um also uh, on uh, youtubes uh, just later on we we love doing this kind of stuff and we have a lot of fun together so uh guess we'll just close it out everyone give a final wave and we'll see you all next time take care everybody bye bye all right bye, we're still live you just ended the recording right